Hello people and welcome back to the channel. In today's video we're going to be showing you how we balance crank assemblies from the actual crankshaft itself to the flywheel, front pulley, clutch cover um, and this is the machine we, we use to do that. So this is our dynamic crank balancer. I do know it looks like it's been delivered by Noah on the Ark but it's a very effective machine and uh, yeah, we do a lot of crankshafts on this. It's very important, every engine build that we do has a, a fully balanced crank assembly uh, and also all the other moving components are balanced and it does surprisingly, especially on these older things, we cannot emphasize enough how important it is. So the way this works is we've got a crankshaft on here that we're doing, this is a, an old Skoda crank uh, what we do is we, we run the crankshaft on these rollers here on both ends of the mains uh, so we do we, we balance the crank end for end first of all we do the front pulley end and then we do the flywheel end of the crank uh, sometimes if they're bad you have to sort of go from from end to end and then back again and, until the crank is fully balanced now the way we do it is or well, the way I do it is I, I remove material off the webs, really, wherever I can, wherever it's not gonna be affect it as in strength-wise. As you can see by the factory, they do, they do have an attempt of balancing it, but obviously as time goes on, and if the crank's been ground, it can affect it, but they obviously drill them, uh, which we we do uh, if, it's, if it has to come out of a, sort of main web but sometimes when you get an area or an angle like this where it, the material has to be removed from it you can't drill holes um, and you don't want to run the risk of it going into oilways etc so I just remove material with the grinder really uh, so this crankshaft has been I've just balanced this I'm not going to attempt to do it with a camera in my hand because I have to use the air, the grinder over there which is a bit iffy so um, I've actually done this. The way this machine works is it works off a sort of X plane. So if we unlock this, these rollers here, you see that they've got a sensor in the back of it. They've got sensors in here. And so it's, what it does is it senses heavy spots in the crank. Uh, it tells you, it sort of senses at what angle it is. And so here we've got, say 21 on here would be 210 degrees. And let's just see one, so one of there, one will be 10 degrees. And, and that will show up on this very modern box up here, and the angle that, that which it's out. So basically what we do is we spin the machine up it, it, this, the machine, when you turn it on, runs at about 400 RPM. Then we unlock the end we're doing. It senses it, and say if it, um, say if up here it goes to you know, 120. Uh, the amount over here. This isn't a particular um, amount of anything really. This is just, a, I suppose, it's just a percentage. Uh, it's, you know, you just get to sort of know the machine and know, you know how, know what the amount is uh, by by how much you took off in the past, really. So, 20 isn't really a lot. 100 is, you know, quite a lot, depending on what plane it's out on. So, say if it's out on 120 degrees and 20 amount, uh, what we do is we go ahead here, we, we lock the machine back off, we, we turn it off, use the brake down here to stop the machine. Then what we do, so it's out, it'll be out on 120, what we do is move it to 12, which will be 120, and then that means that on this plane here and this side of the machine, not the other side, this side is where it's heavy. So get the 120 on the arrow, and on this plane, this is where it will be heavy. So what I would do on the crankshaft is then I would 
move the crank up and I would remove some material off here. As I say, it's just, you get to know the machine. The amount on here doesn't really mean anything. Um, it's just, as I say, it's just experience. The feed and the sets we leave at 50 and zero. That's sort of in the middle there, it's sensitive enough. Uh, so as I say, I've done this crank. I've removed, uh, as you can see, I've removed a fair amount of material. Now what you've got to bear in mind is, uh, the way this works, the further out from the centre line of the crank you remove material, the less material you'd have to move for the amount. So removing material on here, so on this, on this, this bit here, would be a lot more effective than moving it here because that's closer to the centre line. Uh, so, as you, see, as you can see, we've done this crank. What I've done is I've put up the front pulley. So the order we do it, we always do front pulley end of the crank first, then the rear of the crank, and we get the crank done. Then we put front pulley up, um, we balance that, and we leave that up. We put the flywheel on, which obviously, because now we're getting a bigger diameter of material, the more effect it has of being out. And that's why I always say to people, really, when you put a new clutch on a car, it, it can have a drastic effect to the, to the balance of the engine. So we do the flywheel and then we do the clutch cover. Obviously not the clutch plate because the clutch plate is classed as part of the gearbox really. So, um, so what we're going to do, we're going to spin this up now. Um, I'm going to bear in mind the crank is balanced and I'm going to show you if this pulley's out at all. Right, so what we do is we give it a little helping hand push the on button and let's see how much it's out and what angle. So as you can see it's about the amount's about 30 and it's waving about a bit. When it waves about and it's on an actual mount As I say, the way you know that it's balanced is when the amount is sort of flickering around like this and the amount's on zero, you know it can't find where it's out, which means it's balanced. That's the way we know. But when it's showing an amount and it's still flapping about, it's usually because uh, you You've got zero here in 360 there, which is the same thing. So that it's trying to tell you that it's on zero. You know what I mean? So what I'm doing here, we've got 30, it's waving about, so zero. So we're gonna remove material off the zero angle. So we've got that on zero. Point there, we're just gonna drill a little hole in there, make sure it's not gonna interrupt anything and see what effect that has. Right, so guys, I've drilled a 6mm hole about 10mm deep on that axis. We're going to spin it up again and see what effect that's had. So as you can see, it's still waving around, which means we've got the right axis. It's still out there. Um, and the amount's gone down. Not much, five, the amount of five. So what we're gonna do, stop this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna drill another hole. Uh, so look. I'm gonna drill another hole, one there and one there. So we're in effect taking weight off the same plane. And um, obviously by doing, drilling two holes, we should have, should go down about 10 there, I'd say, hopefully more. So as you can see, I've drilled another hole either side of that one on that plane, and I'm gonna spin it up and see if that's had any effect. See, the amount's gone down to zero. He's waving about. So, so that's pretty good. So now what we're going to do is go to the flywheel end. 
I'll set the flywheel up and see what we got. Spin that over, make sure he's running true. He is. So we'll take the clutch bolts out. There we go. Spin her up. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is exactly why we balance crank assemblies now. You know, it's running pretty true, that is, and it is off the scale. You can actually feel it at 400 RPM, so you imagine at 4,000 RPM. That shape the car to bits. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to persist in drilling some holes in that at 300 degrees. So get it on the 30. Have a look on here. We might drill a couple in the front here and see what we got. I drilled a hole on the 300 degree axis about an inch deep. Let's see what effect that has. So, it's moved slightly to 320. The amount's gone down to 75. So, the only thing is, it depends obviously how much, because it's gone off the scale and hit the, hit the limiter as we speak, as we say, it's, um, it depends how much over 100 it was, but you know, say if, that's, say if it's brought that down by 40, uh, if we drill another inch hole next to that, in a f really that should come down to sort of 40, 30, 40. So let's see what happens. So, mounts pretty much zero. Angles all over the shop, so there we go. So as you can see drilled those two holes there one a little bit up about an inch deep I went a little bit too deep so I had to it showed that I was out a bit the other side so a little hole there and we're on we're in balance so we'll get the clutch cover set up now and uh, see how bad that is so we've got club the uh, we've got the clutch cover bolted up and we're gonna spin this up see how bad that is Zero. Hands going all over the shop. So what I did was remove, put four holes here, with a couple there, and one in the opposite where I've gone a little bit overboard here, and uh, it's all balanced. So there we go. What I normally do now is I put it on TDC number one at the top, stamp some marks here in the flywheel and here in the clutch. Uh, front pulley's keyed anyway, so that can only go one way. And then the customer will know where to put this clutch and flywheel once the, uh, when they put it on the engine. So there we go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how we balance crank assemblies. And as you can see by the amounts we were looking at there, it's very important to do this. Um, as I say, 
all of our engines have got every engine component balanced makes a hell of a difference so uh, yeah thanks a lot for watching remember to subscribe and hit that notification bell and uh, yeah we'll see you again soon